Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 644. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to become a billionaire. And I'm talking about this not because I think you really want to become a billionaire necessarily, but let's talk about someone who's done a little bit of research into 21 self-made billionaires about their secrets to wealth and success. I think that sounds pretty fun to find out what it is they have in common and what they've been doing. And maybe applying some of those things will hasten your path to financial freedom. This is from CNBC.com and it was written by Raphael Badziag. And it says, there are billions of people in the world and only a tiny fraction of billionaires. These are the people who have created phenomenally successful businesses and changed the world in significant ways. What's their secret to achieving such impressive accomplishments? What are their belief systems? What gives them the energy to pursue ambitious goals? How did they get to where they are today, and how can we embark on the same journey? To answer these questions, I spent five years conducting face-to-face interviews with 21 self-made billionaires, which I also document in my new book, The Billion Dollar Secret. The billionaires I spoke to are all unique in their own ways. They each have their own area of expertise, individual quirks, and come from all over the world. Despite their differences, almost all of them share a set of six habits. These habits don't come from one's DNA. They can be adopted by anyone and used to achieve massive success and wealth. Number one, wake up early. Each and every single billionaire I interviewed said that waking up early is a big component of their success. Most said their wake up time is around 5.30 a.m. Early hours when the sun is just starting to rise exude a special kind of primal energy. You have more time to think in silence, work undisturbed, and mentally prepare for the day. There's also something wonderful about knowing you're getting a head start while others are still asleep. Manny Stull, CEO of Moose Toys, says waking up early was life-changing for him. It was a struggle at first, but after about two weeks, I was waking up without the alarm. I never got out of the habit ever. No matter what time I go to bed, I always wake up early and exercise for an hour. It's important to note that getting less sleep isn't what makes you successful. There are very few billionaires who only need between three to four hours of sleep, but the majority of them function best after seven to eight hours of rest. Those that need more sleep simply go to bed earlier. Number two, they keep healthy. Without good health, life can be miserable and no amount of success or money can make things better. Whether they're 40 or 80, the billionaires I spoke to all maintain their health by exercising regularly. Brazilian entrepreneur Lirio Paraceto says he hits the treadmill three times a week. My average calories burned per workout is 1,000, he tells me. I do it whenever possible. It's harder when I'm traveling, but I always make up for the skipped days when I get back. It was interesting to learn that many billionaires incorporate their favorite sports into their workout regime. They claim that sports teaches you about winning and losing, both of which are essential skills in business and life. As Magna International founder Frank Stronach once told me, in sports you learn about character, competition, and how to play fair. Sports isn't the only element of a healthy life for billionaires. Many practice meditation or stick to a nutritious diet. Of the 21 billionaires I interviewed, only one was a smoker. The rest were either previous smokers who eventually dropped the unhealthy habit or have never smoked before. Number three, they read. Warren Buffett, a voracious reader, will be the first to tell you that reading is the most valuable source of knowledge. The Berkshire Hathaway CEO reads up to 500 pages a day. When I asked Cho Tak Wong, chairman of Fuyao Group, about the best piece of advice he'd give to the world, he answered, I'd tell young people to read. 
Read books about how to do things right. Read books about how to be a good person. If you have the stereotypical image of a billionaire reading the economy pages of national dailies, you're not wrong. Some of them do just that. Many prefer the likes of The Economist, Financial Times, Fortune, or The Wall Street Journal. Others go for biographies of iconic business leaders or books about finance, business, science, history, or technology. They also learn a lot from fiction and self-help books. It helps to develop a systematic approach to your reading. Keep a priority list of titles based on your interests or recommendations from mentors, anything that will add value to your life. If you want to go the extra mile, mark interesting passages and write down notes, thoughts, and ideas. I just want to pause there and comment on these first three things. Let's talk about the reading first, because reading is an important part of learning so much. And I've told you many times that books like Think and Grow Rich, which are really a compilation of wealthy people's thoughts, habits, beliefs, and actions, And that is an important piece of nonfiction that we have about wealth building. So I always highly recommend that. And of course, my own book, You're Already a Wealth Theorist, Now Think and Act Like One, for those simple steps to create your own millionaire action plan, your map to wealth, and really everything you need to know about personal finance. I have a list of my favorite financial books on my resources page on my website at lindapjones.com if you want to know my favorite all-time financial books and ones that I've personally read and found very, very helpful. The second point was about keeping healthy. And I talked about this recently on another podcast, although I just mentioned it. And that is that keeping your health is so important because health is part of wealth. And staying away from processed food and junk and things that can cause cancer, eating organic, and trying to get exercise and maintain your health is so important because if you lose that, it makes it difficult for you to have quality of life, length of life, and accomplish what you're here on the planet for, not to mention your own personal happiness. I think choosing the right food and staying away from processed food and chemicals is one of the most important things that you have within your control to be able to do to maintain good health. And the first point he mentioned was waking up early. I've always been a morning person, so waking up early is my thing. And I've also shared with you how years ago, when I was first getting a stock portfolio together, I was waking up very early and doing a lot of work before I went to my regular job. Those peaceful hours in the morning when no one interrupts you, no one else is up yet, and you can get a lot done, allow you to really focus and be really efficient with your time. So I really like these first three points and I highly recommend you incorporate those into your life if you haven't already. All right, let's move on to number four. They contemplate. Billionaires love setting alone time to think. They might do this by meditating or some other relaxing activity they enjoy. Kim Beam Soo, one of South Korea's most successful internet entrepreneurs, uses his mornings to think deeply. While taking a shower or walk, I take time to contemplate. This is my most important habit. It's during those times that I've been able to organize my thoughts, gain more clarity on certain things, and develop new ideas. Media mogul Oprah Winfrey is a strong advocate for meditation. In 2017, she partnered with Deepak Chopra to launch a 21-day digital audio meditation series. Each recording includes a mantra and questions designed to encourage self-reflective thinking. Number five, they commit to routines. Routines and rituals are sets of habits that, when practiced consistently, lead to profound long-term results. Most billionaire routines start early in the day. Some have simpler routines, some have more complex ones. But as I mentioned earlier, typical elements of a billionaire morning routine include getting up early, exercising, reading, and contemplating. Beam Su says he sleeps at around 11.30 p.m. and wakes up between 5 to 6 a.m. As soon as he gets up, he puts on a cap, grabs his earphones, and goes for a walk outside. When I come back, I take a shower. Then I come out to the living room where there are a lot of books and choose one that catches my eye, he says. 
After 30 minutes of reading, Beam Sue listens to music for another half hour, enjoys breakfast with his family, and then heads to work. It doesn't matter when you do your routine activities. What counts is that you commit to doing them, even when you don't feel like it. And number six, they practice discipline. The billionaires I interviewed are some of the most disciplined people I've ever met. They set extraordinarily high standards for themselves and the people around them. In sports, for example, you can't achieve great results if you don't have enough discipline to train regularly. The same applies to your life and career. Limit the distractions and temptations that hinder your progress. Show up. Be eager to grow your skills. Of course, billionaires are by no means superhumans. Like the rest of us, they have days where they feel lazy and unmotivated. The difference, however, is that they're fully aware of it and don't allow themselves to slack off. They power through their struggles. Investor Michael Solowow once confessed to me that every morning he has to do things he doesn't like, but I still force myself to do them, he says, adding that there is a lazy voice that lives inside his head, a voice that tries to convince him that he's in a hurry and there's no time or that he doesn't feel well today. But then Solowow thinks to himself, no way, don't cheat yourself, bud. End of article. All right, so those last three points were contemplate, they commit to routines, and they practice discipline. I think another one that could be added here is probably journaling, where they probably, when they're talking about meditation, reading, they're probably also writing some of their thoughts down and thinking through some of the big picture problems that they're dealing with in their businesses. So I would also encourage you to start a journal. I've always talked about a wealth journal. So you can do that just as you learn about wealth building and the progress you're making with your personal finance. Or you could, if you're an entrepreneur, keep a journal about your business, what's going on and how things are going, what's working, noticing different trends. I think what's really interesting about this article is just to show you that billionaires are regular people. They're regular people who take advantage of every day and are very focused. They may be more driven, they may take more action, they may work longer hours, but the bottom line is that billionaires are compounding at a higher rate. Recently, there was an article about Kylie Jenner selling her business for $600 million, and she sold 51% of it, which means that the full company is valued at $1.2 billion, which, as we know, had already put her in the billionaire category. But what I find so fascinating is to build a billion-dollar company in four years would have a compounding rate that was astronomical. What's interesting about Kylie is, among other things, the fact that she made her wealth so quickly. And in a world where we're talking about 1% interest rates or 2% interest rates, to have the kind of compounding rate that she had has to be astronomical. In my book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now, I talk about business owners and a business as a money engine and the fact that many people on Inc. Magazine's list of 5,000 fastest growing companies have grown their businesses at compounding rates from 40% per year to the fastest company growing at 50,000% per year. So for a business owner to achieve a spectacularly high rate of compounding is not that unusual in one sense, in the sense that it's possible for a business to compound at an incredibly high rate. But it really started to pique my curiosity. What was Kylie's compounding rate on her business? Because If you can become a billionaire in four years with a small amount of capital you're starting with, hmm, what must the compounding rate be? Well, the more I thought about it, I thought she must have started with some capital, although I didn't find anywhere in the article where it said exactly what. But she started selling these lip kits. So in order to go to a cosmetic company and order inventory, I imagine she would have had to put out some sort of an investment. I'm going to say it was around $100,000 to get her line started. I could be wrong, and this is a total guess, 
But once I started with that number, I knew she made her billion in four years. So what would have to be the compounding rate in order for $100,000 to become a billion dollars in four years? And again, she didn't sell her business for a billion, but her business is valued at actually 1.2 billion because half of it she sold for 600 million. Well, for $100,000 to get to $1 billion in four years, get this compounding rate, 462,000% per year. Yeah, 462,000% was her compounding rate per year for four years. Now, I could be wrong, I'm not a math genius, but I just went to the calculator and worked this out. 462,000% per year. So you see, starting a business is a powerful means to building wealth and doing it in four years is spectacular. Now, you can argue she had some help. She was already born into a famous family. They already had a TV show going. There's all kinds of arguments about why she didn't quote, start from scratch. And I did do a podcast about Kylie before. So if you wanna listen to that, there's that there. But the point is really the compounding rate is what's spectacular. And with all the billionaires that were interviewed for this article, they all have spectacular compounding rates in common. You have to in order to become a billionaire. So while the author didn't focus on that that they had in common, I'm going to focus on that that they have in common, that they all compounded their businesses at spectacularly high rates. Again, wealth building comes down to three things in my wealth building formula. It's money, compounding, and time. McT is the formula in my book. How much money you have to invest, what rate you can compound, and how long you can compound it for. In this example with Kylie, I'm starting with $100,000 in terms of her money, four years to compound. That means the compounding rate was 462,000%. Good for you, Kylie, congratulations. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And don't forget, over 600 podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. It's a whole wealth mentoring library for your knowledge and financial freedom. And if you're interested in getting your compound rates higher, that's what we focus on at the Be Wealthy and Smart VIP experience. It's my inner investing circle. If you'd like to know more, just fill out the short questionnaire in the show notes and we'll set up a time to talk. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.